Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at a quick way which doesn't require too many formulas or too much of diatonic chord theory, but a nice effective way to not only build your triads, which we are going to do first, but also to then proceed towards forming seventh chords. Okay, so first off, let's just study the two scales, E flat major and E major. E major would be four sharps and it's almost like two boats E, F sharp, G sharp, A another boat like that two boats, C e major uh, E flat major why I like to gang up two of the same named scales E and E flat is now E flat will become the inverted boat so you have a normal boat where you can sit in and E flat would be the tilted boat so you have E major And then you have E flat major. So that will be ta -da, da da is the other boat. Black, white, white, black. Ta -da -da -da, ta -da -da. And then another boat. Black, white, white, black. That will be B flat, C, D, E flat in the second tetrachord as it's called and then E flat F G A flat in the first tetrachord as it's called so E major four sharps E flat major three flats and some general tips when you're forming scales would be for a sharp scale just use only sharps and for a flat scale use only flats so E major if you're branding it as a sharp scale, everything would be written as sharps. There's a reason for that. So if you take F sharp in the E major scale, F sharp, the, 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 the point of a sharp is to replace the namesake natural white note, which is F. So if you call it F sharp, you're easily telling your brain there should not be an F. Don't play an F. F is illegal and so on. While if you called it G flat, then there will not be a G. The flat destroys the white note to its right and the sharp destroys the white note to its left. So you're raising the white note F to become F sharp and thus you won't have F. Or you're lowering the white note G to be G flat and thus you don't need G in the scale. So E flat major has E flat a flat and B flat. The E flat replaces the E, the A flat replaces the A and the B flat replaces the B. And E flat has three flats. You need to memorize that. You need to also try and memorize the order of the flats. The circle of fifths can help you. And I've already told you the piano worms as I call them, which is the white and black assortments of the notes. So before we get started with building intervals, forming these triads seven, and then seventh chords, it'll be nice if you can get your keyboards out and learn with me it's a very simple lesson you can even pause the video draw the scales in your book keep it ready follow my notes you can see all of my handwritten notes on patreon and you can access the notes not only for this lesson also the previous ones and the upcoming ones for just five dollars a month and before we get started it'll be really nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications let's get cracking so first off let's take the E flat major scale and start off with the building blocks of triads and even seventh chords which are simple thirds and we'll form diatonic thirds so what you want to do is first write down E flat major scale in a line that'll be E flat F G A flat B flat C D and then under that, you're going to form the thirds. Now, a trick to form thirds easily without making mistakes, well, you can start by remembering the, the formula. In a major scale, it'll be major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor. So major third would end up being from E flat, you go one, two, three, four steps, and you get yourself a major third, while a minor third would be one, two, three three steps okay now if you're in the e flat major scale already then you don't have to hunt for this stuff it's already right there so write down e flat major in a circle and it's very easy to form thirds like that you just skip one play one so e flat skip f and whack g so that's your first third pair 
so i will write the g under e flat e flat g then f a flat g b flat a flat c b flat d c e flat d f and then finally e flat g i like to train my ear as well at the same time so instead of me playing the third immediately i sing it and check my answer on the piano so e flat g f a flat g b flat a flat c b flat d c e flat d f e flat g okay another good strategy would be to just practice them in a scalar manner and i like to do thirds one by one in the right hand and together in the left hand so you can also sing as you play you can sing your swaras if you enjoy those sagare ma ga pa ma da pa ni da sa ni re sa ga sa re ni sa da ni pa dha ma pa ga ma re ga sa okay so that's your thirds and i'd also recommend you to get familiar with the fifths so building fifths in a major scale is very easy all of your fifths are going to be perfect fifths except for the last one which will be a tritone so to form perfect fifths again you can write down the scale but you'll have to skip a few more so e flat skip f g a flat skip those and play b flat so e flat's fifth is b flat you could also form get your fifths the perfect fifths that is we using the circle of fifths which you have to memorize that's a very important tool in music so if you look at the circle of fifths or whichever way form your fifths and write them under the third so that will be e flat g that's your third e flat b flat so e flat b flat f c f fifth is c g is fifth is d a flat fifth is e flat b flat fifth is f these are all perfect fifths c is fifth is g d is fifth is not a because there's no a in the e flat major scale so to make it diatonic to e flat major d a flat that will be a tritone d a flat just that you have to watch out for and then you end so e flat f to the c g to the d a flat to e flat f to the b flat c to the g d to the a flat tritone and then you close the job with e flat b flat so thirds and fifths are what we are going to use so let's take a very common chord progression used in almost all modern pop music these days at least so th- Uh, that will be a 6 4 1 5 in fact this might sound like so many songs so i hope this video will remain for you to watch who knows which record label will finish us off with this rendition because so many songs have 6 4 1 5 but i thought i'll make it a bit interesting by doing 6 4 1 5 the first time and the second time do 6 4 3 5 let's see Okay, so what is six four one five in the E flat major scale? That would be C A flat four, E flat one, B flat five. So C, which would be the six, A flat, which will be the four, E flat, which will be the one, B flat, which will be the five. Or you can do the variation C A flat G G, which would be the three. b flat which would be the 5 so first job is play this in the left hand and just single notes dha ma sa pa dha ma sa pa if you like dha ma sa pa or dha ma sa pa whichever version works for you these are the fingers i'm using and then for the variation the ma ga pa 
That's a bit weird. So that's pretty much the left. So instead of playing the thirds very close to the left hand, which will clash in terms of frequency, since they're almost the same frequency, I would play the third to offer more clarity, more depth, more width, an octave higher than the usual position. So in my left hand, I'm playing six, four, one, five. The right hand, I'm harmonizing by going up the third. You can look at your chart. So what is C's third? E flat. What's A flat's third? C. And then E flat's third will be G. And B flat's third will be D. So let's just do this as whole notes. What I like to do for variety, maybe ta tackle the ands if you can. One and two and three and four. Maybe one on and one off. Or just keep it simple with semi briefs. Maybe speed it up with minims. The usual off. Every alternate would be off. That'll be a dotted crotchet, a dotted note, and then a quaver. Let's also do the variation. That's a G with its third B flat. So refer to your chart so you don't make a mistake. C with E flat. So the tricky part is to play the root here and its third upstairs in the right hand. So two hands are engaged and that gap between them of more than an octave just makes it sound usable at the word go. At least I think so. You don't need anything else. You can already use this in a song. And one and two and and feel free to add your own rhythms, maybe copying a song you know, maybe or do a different pattern in the right hand and different pattern in the left hand. Maybe you could do doubles here and singles here. Maybe a, a filler in the right hand. So instead of doing pa 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 pa, I'm doing pa pa da da da, te da 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 da, te da do da. Find another note in the scale to take you to the target. Pum pum. So maybe dotted. Okay, so I think it's starting to sound pretty good. You can build any chord progression this way by playing the roots of your chords or whatever you see in Google. If it's a C minor, you just play single C and then because it's a minor, you have a third instantly formed diatonically or else you should know that a minor chord has a minor third in it while a major chord has a major third in it. Now, to add to the party, <clears throat> here's what we do. Now, we've set up a bass already to play C minor. Now, to make it proper C minor with all of its ingredients, what are the notes of C minor? 
C E flat G. Now, if you write these notes in a circle, C E flat G, and if you count the circle this way in clockwise, you're going to get all the piano inversions which we learn traditionally C E flat G, E flat G, C, and G, C, E flat, right? Root position, first inversion. Second inversion, as the books say. But if you write C E flat G and count in the counterclockwise direction, you're gonna get these sort of inversions: E flat C G, maybe B, G E flat C, which I call as classical inversions or classical voicings, which are used a lot in orchestra. has a lot of depth so i also you call them as left hand voicings because you can use this in fact as you get comfortable you can play the whole thing in one hand as well so coming back <clears throat> we've already done c with e flat so now you add up the fifth in the left hand and that's going to give you the spread voicing so this is c minor and what c is fifth We've written down that chart, so that'll be G. Now A flat with its third upstairs in the right hand and with its fifth in the same hand in the left hand. So just those two chords. And you're playing a full on C minor, a full on A flat major, but voiced beautifully in this spread way. And then Go to your E flat and then B flat, all in spread. So, okay. So let's roll with this using a few more patterns. Maybe the variation that'll be a G minor because G minor is the third minor of E flat major. about this is you can start with the third on top and then use that in a free way to build a melody line in the right hand things like that but because you need to land on the C of the A flat next no or Always trying my best to land at the thirds. So I'd encourage you to be creative because now your left hand is is occupied with two notes. So that's already a a, a good thing to do. So that's already quite a busy left hand, while the right hand is just doing a single note. So might as well build a melody. So if I start with the third, another strategy would be just take a cluster of three. And just play along with that. Alongside. So G is my target. Add three on the top. So for A flat, realign your right hand to play the C, which is the correct third of A flat major, but then add two extra notes for melodic flavor. B flat.
Okay, so we've gone from thirds, then we built triads, and then what's next? We've got a full triad, but I'd like to now maybe add something a bit more sophisticated. Let's get a colorful seventh. So a good incremental way to form the sevenths would be, of course, you started with the third, left hand root, right hand its third diatonically. Then the left hand added the fifth. That's already giving you the triad. And these are perfect fifths or diatonic fifths. That one fifth, the seventh will be a diminished. So why not do that same thing in the right hand? So E flat. Now look at your chart. What will be E flat's fifth? Well, that's C minor seventh in a very wide uh, two octave voicing. Maybe A flat major. This is how you are normally playing it. Let's add the perfect fifth for the C in the right. Instant A flat major seventh. So. See, I'm itching. If you want, you can play another third from here. And you get, an, you get a ninth sound. So you can just keep going beyond. But I'm going to stick with sevenths, not to get carried away. So C minor seventh, A flat major seventh. And then what's the third chord? E flat major. So that'll be normal E flat major. With the fifth, so that becomes an E flat major seventh. Repeating. You can just play around with some chords. But let's stick with a progression and then E flat, B flat. So that's your dominant chord. And your tritone comes into the party. So this will be a dominant 7th chord. B flat 7. Maybe a G minor seventh. Right? So hopefully this lesson can get you to understand the intervals, the basic intervals from a scale, the thirds and the fifths, and then use that knowledge to easily form a triad and not just any old triad. This is a beautifully formed triad in a spread shape. It's what any way you would do at a non-beginner, like an intermediate or an advanced stage. This is how we play triads. In fact, you could do that in one hand as well and then play a melody in the right. And then after that, we looked at double fifths. So you take a third between the two hands, build one fifth, it becomes a triad in, from, the, from the left hand and build another fifth from the right hand and it becomes a seventh chord. So hope you have fun with the tutorial. Let me quickly show you this entire thing on the E major scale. I'm going to do this quickly because we have our notes for this entire thing. So I do encourage you to get a copy of the notes. So E major, four sharps. Okay, and what's the progression? C sharp minor it will be because that's your six. A major will be your 4, E major would be your 1, and then B would be your dominant, which is your 5. So let's give it a go. 6, 4, 1, 5, 6, 4, maybe 3, 5, and then with the 7th chord extension, that's just with the extra 5th there.
ki just with the fifth so now that's going to form a seventh set of chords that was on e major scale so as always write it down plot out your thirds plot out your fifth see what write things in circles that's very very important and that will be two scales for you to work on this is a very popular chord progression so you'll find it in a lot of songs as well so hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you did it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications i will catch you in the next one cheers